Why do the rich keep getting richer while the poor get poorer? Let's mind deep. The idea is that when new money is created, it doesn't immediately spread evenly throughout the economy. You've probably noticed that. It's because those who are closest to the source of the creation of the new money, typically the wealthy and their financial institutions, benefit the most. That we are producing something that touches Americans every day of their life. As they spend the freshly printed money, prices start to rise. Monetary inflation, which occurs when new capital is created, generally leads to an increase of cost of goods and services, known as price inflation. By the time it reaches others in the economy, especially those further away from the source, prices are already higher. The delayed distribution of new money can unevenly impact different groups within the economy. This concept is known as the Cantillon effect. So what is it and where does it come from? It all traces back to an Irish-French economist named Richard Cantillon who articulated the theory in 1730 with his essay on the nature of trade. Cantillon's theory revolves around how money is created and how it trickles through the economy. According to him, when money is born, it doesn't spread evenly. Nope, it first finds its way to the financial class, the folks hanging out near the money spigot. In our society, this means the wealthy, especially those in finance and tech. As these money holders spend, it flows into different industries based on their preferences. Picture it like waves rolling through the economy, step by step. Now, here's the kicker. Money creation leads to price inflation. But when those initial spenders flash their newly created cash, they snag goods at old prices. However, as the money ripples outwards, prices rise. So the folks at the end of the chain end up paying more for the same goods. Talk about disadvantage. The cancel on effect essentially says that those closer to the money creation get the upper hand while those further away face higher prices and lose out. Now, who benefits from this effect? The ones chilling closest to the money printer, of course. That includes banks, various financial institutions, the state itself, and state-supported companies enjoying subsidies or political backing. And who's left holding the bag? The losers in this game are the working class. Even for those the new money doesn't quite reach, they still get hit with those higher prices. This creates a divided economy. While inflation seems low at the consumer level, assets like real estate, luxury goods, and specialty foods for the wealthy are skyrocketing in price. The wealthy are literally consuming scarce assets. The cancel on effect suggests that as money flows into the hands of the rich, they enjoy stronger purchasing power than those further downstream. So why should you care? Because if you aren't close to the money printing machine, you're getting screwed. The Cantillon effect is in action today, where the rich get richer through the money creation, leading to increased wealth inequality. It's crucial to understand that quantitative easing and money printing, while legal, tend to favor the wealthy, contributing to the growing wealth gap over the past few decades. So the next time your papaya is $16 and you can't afford it, now you know why. Don't miss Jimmy Song Backstage. For those unfamiliar with the term, um, the Cantillon effect, mm -hmm. can you break it down for us? Yeah, the Cantillon effect is basically the idea that the first users of newly printed money get an advantage over the last users. So in our economy, that would be investment bankers, all, all kinds of government spending uh, and stuff like that, that get the benefit of the Cantillon effect. The people that don't are at the very end of the chain, usually poor people. With the US dollar, it would be like an orphan in North Korea or somebody that's like buying uh, stuff from the black market there. And how would it be relevant to today's time? Yeah, uh, basically it's uh, whoever is at the top get all of the benefit at the expense of the people at the bottom. You're, you're stealing value from, the people at the top are stealing value from the people at the bottom, yeah. 
and how does Bitcoin address or mitigate the consequences of the Cantillon effect? Yeah, uh, because uh, the way that the money comes into existence is through mining, uh, through proof of work, and not essentially creating more of it, there's no Cantillon effect available. There's no new money coming in. So if you have Bitcoin, your value is not being stolen from you. And that's, that's the key. So it's sort of unstealable money uh, in, in every which way. Yeah. And the money is actually yours and it yeah. has value. <laughs> yeah, and you, you always have the same fraction if you don't spend it, right? One, if you have one Bitcoin, you have 121 millionth of all Bitcoin that will ever exist always. And that's, that's, uh, that's a beautiful thing. Bitcoin is beautiful and yeah. that is beautiful. So in what ways do you see Bitcoin as a solution to the distortions it causes in the economy? Uh, I see Bitcoin as a way to neutralize a lot of the fiat uh, sort of uh, displacements of uh, various prices and stuff like that. So, for example, at least in the United States, education, healthcare, real estate, these are all in some way subsidized by the government through loans. So if you make loans available, those things get more expensive because people have access to those services and the providers of those goods or services can jack up the price, which they do. Um, but, you know, under Bitcoin, uh, you know, it, it, all, all, a lot of that goes away because you don't have this artificial sort of demand created through uh, you know, government intervention, uh, and you know that that brings prices to a more normal level. So, for example, housing, I think, becomes um, more based on the utility that you get out of it rather than the store of value premium that it has now for a lot of people. And given that the Kendallon effects origin in the 18th century, mm -hmm. how have its implications evolved with modern central banking practices and what are the most stark manifestations of the effect that we see today? Yeah, so you can you can look at what Cantillon said uh, back in like I think it was like 1723 or something like that. Uh, but one of, one of the observations that I found really interesting was that uh, a lot of the manufacturing ended up moving outside of England, and he said the reason is because of the Cantillon effect. The labor within the country that prints the money goes, uh, the price of labor goes shoots up, whereas you know further away from the money in other countries the labor price is still low. So so manufacturing is incentivized to move. And if you look at the United States, uh, pretty much all manufacturing jobs have diminished significantly since 1971. And we've seen a lot of that move uh, further and further away. Initially, it was to East Asia, Japan, Korea, and then uh, it moved fur uh, further to China. Now, now it's like moved to Vietnam and Malaysia and Laos and places like that and that's because it's going further and further away from the money printer as a way to save on labor and that that's uh, one of the subtle effects that of the Cantillon effect that I, I think we really need to focus on because it's destroyed the middle class at least in the US probably in Europe as well and that's uh, that's an unfortunate side effect. Do you think uh, getting off the gold standard had an impact on that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, 1971, you know, the, all, all of those jobs moved because the labor is cheaper elsewhere. If you want to bring those jobs back, you have to equalize, uh, you, you have to have sound money again. And that, that, that's, that's really it. How did you fall in love with the sound money of Bitcoin? <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I've fallen in love. That's a, that's a very strong way to put it. But I, I do love Bitcoin. I, I guess I've uh, devoted a lot of my time into it because I think it's something that a lot, of, a lot of people don't really understand. So explaining it is something that I enjoy doing. And, um, and I think it can actually really improve people's lives once they really understand it.